In this video, we're going to look at these tabs at the bottom and we're going to start with the Perform tab. Now, the controllers here are global controllers that affect the whole Vienna instance, independent of cells and slots. Now, we have Master Volume, pretty simple and understandable. We can adjust it there and we also get to that in the basic view. We have the Master Volume here. And a lot of these controls are mirrored in the basic page and we can assign them to the basic page. I'll show you that in a few minutes. We have a Master Pitch Control for the entire instance. We have the velocity crossfade, which we've looked at, and the slot crossfade, which we've looked at. And we have a dynamic slider, and this basically scales the velocity floor setting in the slot editor here globally for all the slots and all the cells that are loaded in. So it affects the velocity response. We're going to double click it and set it back to its default value. Now we have attack and release sliders and they scale the slot and patch attack release times globally. Again, we have them individually per slot here, but just a global offset. So nice to have that available there. We have an expression slider, and this is powerful. It sets the master expression volume, and if you're not familiar with the concept of MIDI expression, it's very useful. It's kind of like a volume control that works within the limits that you have set here. So for example, I don't want my overall volume to go any louder than this, but I want to be able to adjust it within there and leave volume alone so I can use this as a way to control volume within this range. I'm going to right click and I'll assign a fader, and now I can adjust my volume while I'm playing but maintain a ceiling. So again, I'm always maintaining my ceiling there. And I'll right double click this to unlearn the assignment. This is a master filter fader and it sets the master filter frequency. And we can go into more nuance with the filter in the Options tab, which we'll get to in a moment. We have the Velocity Crossfade checkbox. We've looked at that. And this checkbox over here enables playback of release samples when it's on. And we have the Voices display. We've looked at that as well. Now let's look at the Controller Map tab over here. Now the Controller list here shows all the parameters that are automatable by MIDI and any current controller assignments. Now we have a scroll bar here to get some that are out of view. And the idea is that we basically just select the parameter and then we look at the source menu controls here to adjust them. We can click here to get a choice of what type of controller we want to assign for these specific functions. We can use a MIDI Learn with that, just like right-clicking. We can invert the direction of the incoming messages and we can make it a bipolar control, meaning it'll move in both directions. We can also click and drag in the graph here and adjust the values like that that'll affect the range that the controller functions in. Now all of this, of course, is an advanced view over here, but in basic view, we can make a subset of these controls available just by assigning them to these faders over here. So if I want to have some of them instantly available, I can just have them here, and that way I don't need to keep switching back and forth. I can get my most frequently used controls available, call them up there, and at the top here we can adjust the assignments if we need or want to. But they're all available here. Here's the master volume one already. And we can assign them from here or any of these values over here, which are basically all represented here anyway. So next we have the reverb tab. Now it's pretty self-explanatory. We have a graph here and we have graph handles. We can click and drag this to adjust the reverb time of the reverb, the length of the reverb. And this one will adjust the dry wet level and we can click and drag in the middle to adjust both at the same time like that. And we have a dampening control over here. Simple controls, but very musical. We have a bypass button. We can set it to none, which is the default when you launch Vienna Instruments, and the Mir X for the add-on convolution reverbs that are available separately. Finally, we have the Options tab. Now, here we have the Pitch Bend range. We can click hold here and set how many cents we want it to go up or down. 200 cents, which is a full tone, is the default. We have a master tuning for the instrument, and of course 440 is the default. We have some different pan law settings, which affects the relative weighting of the volume when you pan your signals left and right. And minus 3 dB is 
kind of a standard setting that maintains a nice smooth volume level regardless of where you're panning. We have the matrix CC number over here and we can assign this, it's off by default, but we can assign it to a number and it basically sets a control change number, a CC number that's reserved for matrix switching when we have number of matrices loaded up in the matrix list over here. We have the sync matrix control which is on or off and basically it enables synchronization of the cell positions when we have multiple cells like that. It enables synchronization of them when we're switching between matrices of the same size that contain the same material. So if you have some nice cells that are customized the way you like them and they're in the same position in different matrices, it'll be maintained, very useful. Now here we have some additional filter controls. We have the master filter type. It can be a low pass 6 dB or 12 dB slope, gentle or more steep basically. And the F1 control over here basically sets the master filter start frequency and F2 sets the end frequency and the curve we can adjust either like that or by just clicking and dragging in the graph. So that's the bottom section of the advanced view. I'll see you for more in the next video.